Welcome to Unlikely Intersections, the podcast where intent, impact, and inquiry inspire our conversations. I'm Dr. Philip Brown with my good friend, Dr. Terry Jackson. We've got a special guest today, Corey Scott. You know, the interesting thing about intersections is that we all face many intersections daily, and the way we navigate these determines the trajectory of our day and our lives. Terry, pretty excited about today's episode, local celebrity chef here. Uh, yes, yes, very excited about that. You know, this young man has been a huge uh, inspiration to a lot of people, uh, younger and older, right? He's been the example of believing in self, and when you do, what can, what, what can happen? Well, tell us a little bit about Corey. All right. <laughs> hey, my name's Corey Scott. Uh co-owner of um, On Time Catering, On Time Restaurant, On Time Food Truck. Got to make sure I put the co-owner in front of it because <laughs> my wife would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what that's like, right? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Uh, native of Wilmington. Uh, been here all my life. Um, only left for like a year and a half. That's when I went to Pembroke for uh, for college. Mm-hmm. And other than that, been here all my life. Okay. Yep. Okay. Awesome, man. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. So, what is it about the culinary arts that's that's so attractive to you? Um, I think it's more the uh, wow effect that I get from mm. when people eat the food and stuff like that. Mm. Um, we just had an event this past Saturday, and um, one lady was talking to me and asked me what uh, culinary school I went to, and I was like, I didn't go to culinary school. <laughs> 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 the, the dish room at the hospital was my culinary school. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. That's um, right. But it, yeah, it's more the wow effect uh, when mm. somebody eating, uh, just like let me know how good it is, and just uh, just the excitement from it. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Man, tell tell us a little bit about your life. Uh, your ascension to, to from from a child to to where you are because there are lots of young people out there who yep. really need to hear yeah. you know who you are where you came from mm-hmm. how your dream has got you to where you are today right. so uh yeah like i said um native of wilmington um we grew up in um jervey mm-hmm. um the original bricks mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh before they was tore down uh me and my family we moved to garden lake mm-hmm. um and after garden lake we moved to uh westchester mm-hmm. um <clears throat> we lived out there majority of our life in westchester um off holly tree off college road um we stayed in a house it was me my mom my grandma uh um, and my brother and my sisters uh a, a normal typical black family not really having much uh grandma and mother working to, to cover ends meat and stuff like that uh, from there um I, after that i went to like i said i went to pembroke um we went there i went there for like a year and a half mm. till i found out college wasn't mm. for me and they mm. said it before before i went in like college ain't for everybody yeah mm. so it's different because High school, you got your mom or somebody yelling at you to tell you to get up, but in college, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because uh, Cedric Harrison, uh, Support the Port, is my, my mm-hmm, roommate. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. He used to get me up. He's like, are you late for class? And I'm like, man, I go another day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I had like a partial scholarship there uh, for football. I ended up losing that because of my GPA was like a 1.76. Mm, and it wasn't mm. because of me not like knowing what to do in school, but it just, I didn't go to class. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I messed up because I had signed up for too many early classes. I think I had a 6 a.m. class for early fitness walking. Mm-hmm. The weirdest mm-hmm. class, just walking around the track all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I even failed freshman seminar. That was actually the top failing class in mm. college. Yeah, mm. just because people didn't go. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> before uh, after that, uh, I, I came out of high, uh, college, and um, when I got back home, my um, grandmother forced me. She was like, hey, "You you, you got to get a job. Like mm. you're eighteen plus. Um, this is a real life now. Uh, if you're not gonna stay in college, you got to get a job." So uh, I started off um, doing like some, a couple of temporary jobs, um, and before that, uh, like I mentioned, Sid Sid was there. He helped me because um, Cedric was working there during the summertime. Mm. So I reached out to him to try to get a job at the hospital. 
So um, this was the time when like getting a job was like the hardest thing in the world, and getting in the <laughs> hospital was by far the hardest thing in the world. So I actually used my uh, grandmother's uh, name for a reference because mm -hmm. she was a CNA um, at both ho hospitals for forty years, forty plus years. Mm -hmm. um, she retired from um, Cape Fear Hospital. So I use her. Uh, then in the meantime, I was doing a temporary jobs, and I got a call that I had got the job. And I remember <laughs> jumping off the loaded dock at this temporary job and going straight. To the job. <laughs> and I just so I just quit. I ain't tell the people where I was going or anything. <laughs> so I was out. So I started the dish room. I was eighteen years old. A uh, couple of things I remember. I remember um, some of my friends um, that was like in the, in the drug game that was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, at the time the hospital had just a uh, pull-up door where the conveyor belt was at. That's when people dropped their food off after eating in mm -hmm. an um, dish room. And I remember them pulling that up and yelling at me, "Ha ha ha! Well, you got a job? You working such and such, such and such? You back here washing dishes?" And, and at that point, I was like, "Man, like, do I want to do this or do I want to go out there and and, and do what mm -hmm. they're doing?" Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't have to. Mm -hmm. So it, it it really 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 shot me down after looking at that, and it, it's it's funny funny because those guys the same the same guys that said that they're not here right they they're incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking like yo I I, I did make the right decision. So <clears throat> eventually uh I worked in a dish room I think for the like first five years. Uh, so this is where the culinary part came in. Um, I used to go into the kitchen and get the cook's trash and everything, make sure they straight, loading their dishes back up. And it was this one guy, he was in there, uh, like chopping up some onions or something like that. And I was like, can I try it? And he was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was telling me how to guide the knife, pull your fingers back, guide mm -hmm. the knife when you're cutting. So I went in there, I tried it. So uh, eventually I started doing it more and more. Can I help, can I help, can I help? So I was helping the cooks do things, but still getting paid dish room thing. So <laughs> it, it wasn't, at that time it wasn't about the money, it was more about a passion now. So I was creating a passion at the same time I was doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, as that was that was building up, um, they were short of cook that day. And then I told the chef, I'm like, hey, I do it. So it was funny because that day it was uh, fried chicken wings. <laughs> and the same guy that was teaching me how to uh, do the nice key said, listen, tell you something. Whatever you do, do not leave this corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I thought I was caught up. I left, man, next thing you know, they're out of chicken wings in like five minutes. And I, and then I didn't leave out of that corner for that whole day after that. Um, so then eventually uh, he started, the chef had like more positions open that I was picking up. So I was picking them up, picking them up, picking them up. And then... Um, <clears throat> Then eventually, a, 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 actually, a whole spot opened up. Mm. So I put in for that position. And me being young, uh, calling out, not coming to work all the time, um, and uh, you know, the hospital was just head on with occasions and tardies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when I put in for that position, um, it was two people. It was me and another guy. I didn't get the position because of my attendance. Mm -hmm. And I remember running into the bathroom and just like, crying my heart out like god like i did all of this stuff and i i could have sworn i had this job but i didn't so right behind that the, at the time the director he came in the bathroom behind me and talked to me and let me know like listen this is the reason why it wasn't your work ethic this is the reason why you didn't get it because of your uh tardies and stuff like that but i promise you if you come to work come on time and do what you gotta do the next spot that opened up i'll give it to you and then, so eventually, that's what happened. I ended up getting the, the spot that opened up. Mm. Um, then we, uh, and mind you, <laughs> when I got that spot, this is the first time I ever cooked anything. <laughs> anything. I mean, I we cooked at home, maybe some tacos and some oodles and noodles or something like that. But it was never no cooking. <laughs> never no cooking. So, so we're there. Um, and the guy that, this is when the, the hospital opened the room service. Mm. This is when they first opened the room service. So I had a night shift. And um, I came in midday uh, to help finish lunch. And I was working along a guy that was, that's been cooking for like 20 plus years. And he was an awesome chef. Um, so after working beside him, he was like, hey, I might leave. Why are you about to leave? I said, what? so what am I doing? And he was like, you're right here. You're taking my spot. And mm. I'm like... No. <laughs> so he was like, uh, he was like, he was like, pay attention. 
You see this fish that's on the grill? Like, yeah. He said, listen, when you look at the fish, the fish is going to curl up on the edges. That's when you know it's time to flip it. Mm. If it's not curling, don't touch it. Mm. So I sat there, looked at it, and seen it curl up. Then I flipped it. When I flipped it, I was like, oh, it didn't stick to the grill. Mm. So then I had a little bit of confidence then. Um, so eventually he left. Um, I was there. The, I was on the line with the chef that hired me and everything. So it was kind of intimidating. Um, but I, I, I did a good job. Uh, and from there, it was to a point like I had like crazy momentum, like mm. like sky's the limit type momentum. And mm. I was like, yo, I, I, I came from the dish room. Like mm. I didn't have a job, you know what I said, a couple of years ago and I'm doing this now. So uh, as I worked throughout the years, I worked my way up. Uh, eventually from the cook, I went to, um, what is it called? We used to do this exp, exp, uh, not expediting um, thing out in the cafeteria where you're cooking fr- out in front of people. Mm-hmm. And it's a funny story how that came about because one day I was walking out going to get something to drink and it was a guy that was on that station. He had a pacemaker mm-hmm. and he had about 20 or 30 people in line. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, you need some help. Me, get myself in trouble every time. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help people. So I'm helping him and as I'm helping him, he just leave. And I'm like, where you going at? So he left. Mm. Um, I guess he was getting too worked up. Like I said, he had mm-hmm. a pacemaker and everything. Um, so he ended up leaving. When he left, the chef came out there with me again, the same chef. So he uh, next day he brought me in the office. He said, hey, I need you to do me a favor. So what's up? He said, so I want you to work half your days on the line and half your days mm-hmm. doing this. So come to find out, the days that he was putting me on was the hardest days, mm. making pastas and stir fries and stuff like that. And the guy that was there, mm-hmm. he was making salads and stuff like that. So uh, that guy eventually ended up transferring out, and he go, um, went to another department. Um, and then they kept me on that position five days a week. From there, I went to uh, running a catering, catering department. That was the last three years. And then... Um, I just remembered uh, it was the last hurricane that we had at the hospital. And I looked my chef in the eye and I said, this is my last one. This was mm. September 2019. He laughed at me. <coughs> hey, you're not going nowhere. Ha, 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 ha. I said, mm. okay, I can show you better than I can tell you. Right, right. And then um, <clears throat> at that time, this is 2019, sept- uh, September 2019, be- right before that, me and my wife, uh, we had we was doing like catering on the side. Like everybody else do mm-hmm. catering out of the kitchen type mm-hmm. thing. Um, so we ended up saving a, a good amount of money. So we is in the process of buying a house. So we was like, okay, you know what? We got a, I got a choice. And this is me thinking to myself, I can buy a bigger house or I can expand my business. Mm-hmm. So what we did was I went to my wife. I said, hey, I got an idea. She was like, oh, no, not one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yo, just believe me. Just trust me, okay? <laughs> it's going to sound weird, but just trust me. So we took $25,000 cash mm-hmm. out of the, some of the money that we saved up. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. money was really was supposed to like go to a, a bigger house. Mm-hmm. So we settled for a smaller house, 1,700 square feet house. Um, and I took the $25,000 cash to go buy a food truck. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to the bank, going to get that money. And we had a, uh, matter of fact, they had a, we had to wait and they transported us to another bank so that that bank could wire mm-hmm. the money or something. Mm-hmm. It was just crazy. Mm-hmm. So uh, we ended up getting that. And the guy that wanted it, he wanted cash. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. like, I can't write you a check. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I, we ended up uh, traveling all the way down um, to Ocean Alley to go get it. And I didn't want to ride with it by myself, so I, my mother rode with me, um, transport twenty five thousand dollars, and mm-hmm. then we went into his bank. They counted it out; everything was good, and I got the food truck. Mm-hmm. So along that way, uh, this was now that we got that in July. So we start now in twenty nineteen from July to the end of the year was like the biggest. We had four big trauma, drastic crazy events that ever happened in our life mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. some of these events if one thing happened to anybody they wouldn't be able to recover from it mm-hmm. what we mm-hmm. have for mm-hmm. um one i just told you was spend twenty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars cash mm-hmm. on a food truck mm-hmm. um <clears throat> two was october we bought our first house mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i mean that's you know that's kind of tough now for mm-hmm. people buying houses so that's a big thing for us um uh, three days later after settled, settling into the house, me and my wife on the back porch, just chilling, just relaxing, looking into the um, into the 
the the night. I remember looking at stars and she told me to feel her breast. Mm. And she had a lump in her breast and I was mm. like, uh, I don't know what that is. She said, Yeah, it just it just it came about. So I started doing research uh, instead of calling Doctor Brown, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing research and then mm. um I like I pressed on it and I asked I said, Did it hurt? Do it hurt when I pressed? She said, No. And then that was one of the signs of breast cancer. It was mm. a lump that doesn't hurt. And I was like, ooh, okay. And I try to I was trying to think of like other things to like persuade her like this is not it. Mm-hmm. So she ended up getting diagnosed with breast cancer. Um that was number three. And then number four was December third, twenty nineteen. I left the hospital at thirteen years. Mm-hmm. So we those four big events happened in six months. Mm. So um from there, those four big events gave me the biggest faith in the world. I mean, capitalized F A I T H faith. Mm-hmm. Like it mm-hmm. was just crazy faith to the point like I know that I could do anything. I could jump off a building and hang glide without a hang glide. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That type mm-hmm. of faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> from there, we bought the food truck. We uh, January of January of twenty. What is that? Twenty twenty now. Um, we went out with the food truck. So mind you, the food truck was supposed to be just a backup of me doing catering. <laughs> So uh, that was like, if I leave the hospital, then I got to have a backup just in case catering is not going right. So March hit, COVID hit. Oh, yeah, all my caterings went away. Mm -hmm. So now where's my backup? Mm -hmm. And that was the food truck. Mm -hmm. So luckily, we ended up buying the food truck, and that's what happened after that. Um, We really built our name through the food truck, Mm -hmm. um, through COVID. So most, I mean, it was a blip. COVID was actually a blessing to us, but not a blessing to many 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 other people it was actually a blessing to us which was with like the the weird way of looking at it um we created a, a crazy following off of it uh setting up at uh sam's club for 10 hour days we had nothing else to do nobody else had nothing else to do no else to eat um and we just pushed it pushed it pushed it pushed it and then from there it's just we're here <laughs> Man, what yeah. a fantastic story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You talk it's got all the elements that mm-hmm. you know, we talk about leadership, we talk about putting yourself out there, we talk about recognizing things, we talk about taking risks, mm-hmm. we talk about all these things and mm-hmm. we just heard your perfect story that really has all those components, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. These mm-hmm. leaps of mm-hmm. faith basically mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. I'm not sure, you know, there's no way to be, know for sure, but I believe. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. man, that's just fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know we enjoyed the food truck a lot during the pandemic, mm-hmm. personally. Um, you know, but parts of the story I didn't hear is there were parts of it all along where you were giving back a little bit yeah. in the community yeah. and mm-hmm. doing things and uh, involved a little bit with NC Swim there mm-hmm. as far as, you know, just kind of there was always that giving back component. Yeah. Uh, as you were as you were following your purpose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And I think you're still doing a little bit of giving back from time to time. Mm-hmm. As I understand it. Tell yep. us a little bit about that, what that looks like for you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're doing it. Uh, just not as much as we uh were in the beginning. In the beginning, it was like more time that we had to do it. Um, we uh fed the uh, kids a couple times. Um, that was during the time during COVID when they was out of school and um. They was eating all the school lunches. So we was hearing like a lot of complaints about school lunches and stuff like that. Uh, so it was like, hey, let's 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 go out there. We just, we just needed a spot to go do it at. And then uh, my friend Julian Williams, um, he reached out to me and was like, y'all can set up here at the boys club. Mm. And then that's when we, we had like so many people like just donating. So we just had food, uh, just a whole bunch of di- different things that we were just giving away. We actually did that twice. Uh, we fed the homeless a couple times. Um, and then now we just, now it's more of donating instead of like more physical um, work. Because, right. Just because of the time. Uh, we try to donate where needs to be donated, mm-hmm. not just, hey, I'm doing this. Can you do this? No. It, I mean, we it, we donate to like what really makes sense type thing like that. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed about, about you guys is you have really stayed deeply connected in the community Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know those roots have stayed right where they were planted in the first place right yeah and um you know i think that's really important obviously Mm -hmm. to do that obviously you do i know terry does Mm -hmm. you know and it's uh it's interesting to watch how Mm -hmm. it's almost become magnetic for you guys yeah right Mm -hmm. i mean like 
there there is just growth all the time yep. and you get to the place it looks like from your <laughs> online presence and from the times i've been to the restaurant and stuff it's not like you got a lot of extra time so no. actually <laughs> <laughs> this is extra time for him right, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> giving away time gets harder but then when you you know when you have a little bit of financial resource yeah. to put forth mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about you know the restaurant mm-hmm. was also a leap of faith right I mean, I know that you guys had an investment in the place, but yeah. you also had, uh, you know, the whole renovation mm-hmm. process. Yeah. And, you know, there's obviously you got to get access to capital. And mm-hmm. What did that process yeah. look like for so, you? Before I even start off that, like, um, I do a lot of, like, Facebook posting. Um, and it's all, like, positive Facebook posting. Um, and I... I it's easier to explain it now than instead of me putting up a post up. Post up. Um, I post be it's not to say that hey I'm this and I'm that and I'm all this and I'm that. I'm I'm probably one of the most humblest person like around here. Mm-hmm. It's to a point that like uh, one girl told me one time, hey you're too humble. Being too humble probably could get you in trouble. Um, and then she explained it to me. It's a long story, but she explained it to me, and I understood it. Um, you know, when growth, you, you grow too at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I still, while I'm growing, I still act like I'm that dish room Corey. You know what I'm saying? But you mm-hmm. still got to try to catch mm-hmm. up with your growth. Mm-hmm. Um, but I say this is because the way I post is always positive, positive, positive things that happens to us. Like I just explained that story. Um, and that's the reason why I do post, like, we won this, we won this, we won this, because I know where we came from. Like, mm-hmm. for me to sit there and watch my wife go through chemo and stuff like that, mm-hmm. head shaved, um, I got a picture in my phone, her sitting next to my daughter. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're doing chemo, you, it's just like you, you, it's killing you. And I watched that picture, and I sit, I remember mm-hmm. looking at that, looking at her when I taken that picture, mm-hmm. like, wow, like, at least she has a chance to fight. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. most people don't. They can get in a car wreck, and they don't mm-hmm. have a chance mm-hmm. to fight. They can die mm-hmm. instantly. She mm-hmm. has a chance to fight, and that's how I look at life now. Like, mm-hmm. keep going. You got a chance to fight. So, uh, and I just wanted to put that out there. That's the reason why we post so much positive mm-hmm. things, so other people can see it too. It's not mm-hmm. like a bragging thing. It's just letting them know, like, listen, um, I'm a, a black entrepreneur giving other black people hope. Like, mm-hmm. that's all it mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as the restaurant, uh, so how that came about too? Uh, I used to have um, this guy. And a couple other guys that came with him used to come to the food truck all the time. They came, 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 always came. Um, and not knowing that this guy was going to be, like, the savior later on, um, <clears throat> it was to a point that, like, we knew that we needed to eventually expand in front of the food truck because everybody was missing the food truck. So I reached out to uh, – a couple people, I forgot the lady's name. She used to work at a hospital. I reached out to her, and now she works for Live Oak. Um, to come to find out, she's actually uh, Garrett uh, Huntley's um, Huntley Garrett uh, assistant. Huntley is the uh, president of Live Oak, mm-hmm. so we ended up getting contacted with him. I had a, a meeting with him to discuss future plans. So I knew me being a, a, a a shift. I didn't know anything really about banking. So uh, my friend Jamar Jenkins, he's uh, mm-hmm. a banker. I took him with me to the meeting to help me out. So while I'm in there, I'm actually telling these people what we're doing. Hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. We're feeding these people such, 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 such. But bankers didn't want to hear that. Bankers want to hear three, four, six, nine. They want to hear numbers. Mm-hmm. So I remember Jamar stopping me. He was like, and he tapped me. And he was like, let me take over. And then he started taking over and he started explaining numbers to him. And then now he was like, oh, okay. So eventually, uh, when we leave, we left that meeting. Jamar got a call back. And like, he told me he was like, "I got a call back. They want me for an interview." And I'm like, "Huh?" So I'm thinking in my head, uh, like, "Why they ain't call me? Like that was that was my interview. You came in there with me." <laughs> so, like, yeah. so like, uh, my natural. I don't want to say it like a, a, the hating part, natural part came in. Oh, not like good. saying that I was hating on him, but a, like a natural, like you, it's, it's natural. Mm-hmm. Like why didn't I get it type thing? Like that ain't right. Um, so eventually he uh, ended up getting a job down at uh, Channel and they would needed somebody to hire for that position. So he got a job and everything. I'm like, yo, these people ain't called me back yet. 
So they eventually called me back to go set the food truck out up, up out there um, and serve them. And I'm thinking in my head, well, I guess that's their way of like saying, hey, sorry, we didn't call you back. You come out here and make some money type thing. So eventually that uh, ended up to another conversation, another meeting, because the first meeting I didn't have all my credentials right. Um, and mind you, that have an account and, and everything else in line is very important. So my account had everything that I needed when I went back to the next meeting. Um, now mind you, go back to the beginning of the story when I said it was a guy that always came to the food truck. So I ended up, um, they ended up connecting me with back with the guy. And I'm like, hey, what's up? His name's Joe. I was like, man, you the one that comes to the food truck? He's like, yeah. And then kind of found out Joe was my underwriter. So this whole time he was coming to the food truck, he was the underwriter for the bank. So that's who I sat down with. Joe sat down in my kitchen with me and my wife. We did all the paperwork to underwrite to get the building and everything because we knew somebody else was already on top of it, and I let him know that. And then, then that, uh, we sat in there. I think we stayed at like 10, 11 o'clock just getting everything situated. The next morning, we was under contract to buy the, uh, the mm -hmm. building and the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So eventually, uh, everything got right. We went for one number that we thought was going to cover everything, but being that I was trying to – be the nice guy, save a, save a historic black building. Um, it ended up being like almost double what we asked for. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a lot of different things that we had to like go through during the pandemic. Uh, it, it was just a ton of things. I think the biggest thing that we had to go through was a uh, electrical box that we mm -hmm. was waiting on. So the mm -hmm. building was done mm -hmm. six months, six months just <clears throat> sitting there, the building was done. So that electrical box was like way out. It was supposed to be actually here uh, like this past March. So it was supposed to open up like March, we're giving another tape about April, this month. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, one day I put it on Facebook. Uh, I said something like, this is not right. Uh, why is God punish me, punishing me? And then um, People started commenting, and then this one guy was like, "Yeah, I know how you feel, man. We're going through it now with our electrical business." And he said, "Electrical business," and that then then there I inboxed this guy, and I was like, "Yeah, this is what I'm going. This is what happened to me, such and such, such and such." And he was like, "Wait a minute, I know a guy that might have that piece that you need." Now this piece right here, we don't call everywhere, California, Oregon, any place you can name this in the United States, they don't have it. Everything's on back order. This guy had one. This guy lived. We're talking, he told me where you live at, and I was like, wait a minute, off off such and such road in Leland? And he was like, yeah, we live in the same neighborhood. Then his his son plays with my kids every day, not knowing that this guy had the piece that I needed. So we ended up buying it from him, and then boom, we got in. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like a whole bunch of different miracles. I was like, yo, God is real. You know, yeah, that, that's that's interesting that you just said what you said. Yeah. A whole bunch of different miracles. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a course that I took a uh, year or so ago, and Doc and I just finished it again. I took mm -hmm. it again, right? And um, part of the assignment deals with miracles. Mm -hmm. And the first time, I would always ask the question, you know, why aren't these miracles happening? Well, in the course of taking the course, I came to the conclusion that everything is a miracle now, yeah. right? Yeah. And so as I sit and I listen to your story, um, it's all a miracle, mm -hmm. right? And the beauty of it all is even though I didn't know you as a child, right. I knew your mother because yeah. I went to school <laughs> with her. Mm -hmm. I knew your father because we played basketball right. together. And it wasn't until you told me one day, right. hey, my dad. I was like, what? <laughs> and, then, and then your mom and, you know, we, we, we went to school together. Yeah. So the beauty is to see someone younger than myself mm. coming out of the same kind of environment that I came out of, right? right? And just succeeding, right? Mm -hmm. I like to say you talk about faith and you talked about believing. Yeah. For me, you get to the point of knowing. Yeah. I yeah. know what I'm capable right. of right. doing, right? right? Yeah. I know I can do this, right? Because the little wins. Mm -hmm. I've proven to myself time and time again, even though I went to college, college wasn't for me. Hey, let's. I went to the hospital. I took this step. I took mm -hmm. this step. I took this step. Mm -hmm. I succeeded at it all. You know, I needed some some course correction, right. but you know, because I wasn't always on at work on time yeah. or mm -hmm. calling out. But once I got course corrected, 
the sky was the limit. Mm -hmm. And now I'm an entrepreneur and I'm serving thousands and thousands of people, you know, uh, on a weekly basis. But more importantly, I'm an example for young people, yeah. young African-American males yeah. of what can happen if you believe and know yeah. who you are. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. you end up on Unlikely Intersections podcast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How much better than that's that? Right. That's, that's right. right. that's right. Uh, that's right. You know, but the truth is, Again, it's that story of, of how so many businesses, how many personal successes happen. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, you did stretch yourself out there. It wasn't like everything fell into place immediately. Right. There was a ton of perseverance. There was That's a right. lot of adjustment right. that you did along the way, you know, and That's now right. That's right. it is what it is. And, you know, not only is your business on time, I bet you're on time yeah, every yeah, day. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> early, early most days. <laughs> I mean, right? No coincidence, that's right? right. That's right. Like, it's that's amazing right. That's that, right. That, uh, that's right. That's right. that everything fell together. And, yeah. you know, so many people, you know, s sort of stepped in and were, were, were part of that journey mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Uh, just like it's probably happening, and you may not even realize it yet. Sometimes you probably do. You're part of people's journey yeah. now that's in a right. lot of different that's right. ways. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and uh, the piggyback on that, um, like all of this – success that we're having right now was just it's just not from Corey or Fallon. It was um <clears throat> Corey and Fallon always asking for help. Um uh, that's a big thing in a black community. Everybody's scared to ask for help. That's right. That's um, right. That's I remember right. looking at Keith Rose, which is my mentor, mm -hmm. and seeing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So instead of hating on him or talking bad about him, I went to him personally. Hey, mm -hmm. I admire you. I need your help. Mm -hmm. And from that day on, this and then this was this was the, around the time that I got the cook job at the hospital. Mm -hmm. and this is a, I remember mentioning to him, hey, I want to leave the hospital, and he's like, mm -hmm. why? What's the reason why you want to leave? And the reason wasn't good enough. And he was like, well, when it's time for you to have a better reason, then you could leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and then other things like that. He's helped me on the the food side. I have my pastor, uh, Pastor Robert Cameron from New mm -hmm, Beginnings. Mm -hmm. He helped me a lot mm -hmm. on the business side. Mm -hmm. My plan was to go straight into a restaurant from the hospital. And he was like, why not start smaller and then work your way up? Mm -hmm. And that was the reason why we ended up getting the food truck was because of him. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just to say this, to say that is that, like, I don't mind asking for help for anything. If I need help with this... I want to find somebody that's successful in that, and then I'm going to ask them, can they, can they help me do it? Yeah. You know, one of my favorite sayings is, I want to be around people who are doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. or have done what right. I'm doing because I want to look at them as a mentor. And regardless of where you get in life or where you think you might be, right, there's always help, mm -hmm. right? I just had a conversation uh my last MG100 Connect on uh, Friday, right? My Connect group, and there's a guy in there named Dr. James Rogers. He was an executive at Bell South, one of the first black executives there. He's about 70 years old, so he's 10 years older than I am, right? And so um, prior to that, that Wednesday, he and I had a one-on-one -on -one call, Zoom call, right? We were talking about some things with me and my business. And <clears throat> on Friday, he said, you know, I just want to commend Terry. He said he sent me some work. And I tore it apart. Mm. And he was very humble in accepting <laughs> <laughs> uh, my advice to him. And yeah. I just started laughing, right? So it goes to your point. We all need help. Right. We all have somebody that's much better at what we do mm -hmm. who can give us advice and give us different perspectives. Right. And so to have the mindset that it's all about help is a great mindset to have because it doesn't matter, you know, I probably have five or six mentors, right? Mm -hmm. Some are younger, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because it's a whole different perspective. Yep. You know, Doc probably knows this, but he probably hadn't said it, but I listen to Doc a lot and some of the things that he's doing and saying, mm -hmm. and it gives me a whole different perspective, yep. you know, on life. And I'm listening to you and I'm like, wow, yep. I didn't think about it from mm -hmm. that perspective. So we all kind of serve to help each other right. and, and more of us need to realize it. And, and as you said, in the black community, it's not people you, you consider the weak yeah. or soft, yeah. right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I remember a guy came up to me one day and he said something about soft. I said, Would you much rather be soft and earn a million dollars or hard and in prison? Yep. You answer that question <laughs> for me. 
that's, that's right. hundred uh, you know, percent. Yeah. yeah. You know, and this this idea of asking for help, I, I think there's it's difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. I know I've struggled with it. It's something mm-hmm. that I've mm-hmm. actively been working on for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the whole process of training as a surgeon, the mantra was trust no one, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the truth of it is, nobody gets anywhere by himself and you got to trust a lot of people. And the more you trust them, the faster you go. Yep. The speed of trust is, yes. is the fastest thing yes. out there. And yes. One of the things you said made me think about a concept. I think maybe we could talk about is, you know, this business of help of mm-hmm. not only accepting help, but giving help. Mm-hmm. And in a business context, a lot of times folks get confused and they start thinking competitive. Yeah. But there's also this concept of abundance, right? Mm-hmm. And so the better that other people who may be like you, who may be even in the same industry or doing some of the same things, yeah. the more <clears throat> successful they are, in a way, the more successful you yeah. can become. That's right. Mm-hmm. And that whole idea right. of, of helping and abundance comes into play. Yeah. And I wonder how, you know, like you just talked about it with you and Keith, mm-hmm. um, that you know, you certainly haven't hurt his success any. Mm-mm, no. <laughs> uh, right. And and so, and that same thing plays out. And I, Terry and I do a lot of different work and, you know, help lead people around what that looks like and mm-hmm. help them come to grips mm-hmm. with that. But how does that hit you now as you're, you know, as you've kind of, you've gotten to a place, right, a place of real mm-hmm. prominence, a place of obvious success, you know, almost a, you know, you're you're probably, I would guess, maybe looking at your next growth opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what does that start to look like for you, and how do you think through that? So far as the helping, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so with the, the help, pro, uh, I'm actually uh, mentoring a, a, a guy right now, mm-hmm. um, and I helped him with his uh, first wedding. Like, a, lot, a lot of people don't know this. I don't put it out there or anything. I mean, if he wants to put it out there, he could put it out there. But um, he just got through his first wedding successful. And I remember him calling me and just screaming, I did it, I did it, I did it. <laughs> but I'm thinking in my head, like <clears throat> um, like how you just said, it doesn't hurt any type of revenue coming in because we get at least 15 to 15 like catering calls a day. <laughs> then we got a restaurant open. I know for a fact we 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 could only probably do one mm-hmm. out of that fifteen. So mm-hmm. what I'm gonna do is let them just try to call somebody else. But I have somebody else that's on standby that I could get a number two and he'll call and he's mm-hmm. gonna be good. And then they're gonna know that hey, that you referred me. I, I got referred from Corey and I already know that the people that I sent them, they always they always gonna be a low, long time like customer of mine anyways. So it's just like me helping. I just helped them, and I just helped him hmm. on getting. You know what I'm saying? In the yeah, position, yeah. Stuff like that. So far as help, uh, I just look at it as as, as blessings, as blessings. And uh, I'm a strong believer that no one, no one can stop your blessings. And I think the only person that can stop your blessings is you. Hmm. And, and that's that's just how I'm, I, the the type of work that you put in anything. Um, a lot of people say that don't 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 tell somebody your secret to uh, stop your blessings. I don't believe in that. Um, what's what's for you is for you, and what's not is not. I'm a strong believer in that. So if if you felt like oh I blocked your blessings, like no no you didn't block my blessings. It just wasn't for me. So at the time when we was trying to open a restaurant, when I thought we was about to open a restaurant, they people probably was praying on our downfall or something like that. But that wasn't blocking our blessings. It just wasn't our time. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So for me, helping is just, it, it, it helps me out. It helps it helps me, my wife out, my family out, because it brings more blessings to us. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Helping yeah, it's so like yeah. a universal principle of increase, right? right. That's you right. know, the more That's you right. yep. put out there, the way it, the reciprocity is out there all the time. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and building those networks, mm-hmm. right? Like people get networking wrong so much, right? Like you go to them go to a social meeting and you network and you give each other a card mm-hmm. and you yeah. give yeah. contacts. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I don't. Like yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't care I for have, that at all. To be honest with yeah. you, I mean, it's no offense to that. I, I don't really attend those uh, yeah. type yeah. of meetings. And don't it's, need to. It, it's just more of a a show type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, um, <laughs> my networking is, uh, I, I, I can't network with somebody that's not going to help me 
like what what I want to do. If I want to uh, uh, build a boat or something like that, I'm going to find somebody that know how to build a boat, not somebody that that's doing the the total opposite. That, yeah, you, you <laughs> yeah you so on not point. You, you, you know, and, and, and and sometimes I say this. I said you know, I, and I tell I've said this to you a couple times. Doc, I need to get out into the community more, right? Mm-hmm. But some of, of what prevents me is being able to look around and say, well, okay, who am I going to, wh- what meetings am I going to go to? Mm-hmm. It's got to be something that is of interest to my, me, and I know that whatever they're doing, it's part of my purpose. Mm-hmm. And it has mm-hmm. to be um, with people who can execute, mm-hmm. because you run into a lot of people who can't execute, right? Yep. Um, I think the very first conversation I ever had with you, mm-hmm. a, f- a mutual friend of ours, yep. gave me a call and said, hey, you know, you need to talk to this guy. And I think uh, DeLon Solomon. Mm-hmm. Yep. So- Solomon. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I yep. think he was talking about a business plan. Yeah. And and we- he- Solomon was actually one of the cooks I used to wash his dishes too. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep. yep. He-, he said, you need to talk to this guy, man, about a business plan or whatever. And, and-, and I think he gave you my number. Mm-hmm. And we talked, and at the time, yeah, I, we, I remember I, talking on the. We was on the phone for yeah, exactly, a couple of hours. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I didn't know exactly who you were. Right. I didn't know who your mother was at yeah, the time, and yeah. I didn't know your dad, right? But I remember we had a great conversation yeah. for a couple of hours, mm-hmm. right? And then you know, I just kind of watched your progression and what you did. And right. then I did a. I spoke at the hospital event, and you and you were part of the catering team mm-hmm. for that, right? Mm-hmm. And so I saw you there. Yeah. Then of course, NC Swim, yeah. right? So I watched your progression, and I was like. He's yeah. in the right places. Yeah. So networking, a lot of the times, is about being in the right, right places, places with the yeah. right people, yeah. not just with everybody passing out a business card. Yeah, right, yeah. it's around purpose, yeah. like you said. And I, I, I really, really think my biggest networking was from the hospital. Mm-hmm. That was my biggest networking. I, I met Dr. Brown. Um, we met at a couple different places, and he was just like, you wouldn't even, I wouldn't even think Doctor was in front of his name the way he acts. So. Um, I met him. I met a whole bunch of different other people from the hospital. It was just like a, a, a all the networking. Most of all the networking came from there. From that's when it started out. Yeah. Yeah. And, cli- and clientele too. So yeah. 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 And that was you know you said a great thing about your uh, your mentee mm-hmm. that did the catering right like you helped provide that opportunity, but the person still had to step in and perform. Yeah. Just like you always had to step in and perform yeah. over time, you yeah. know, and you and as you as you grew that ability, mm-hmm. the opportunities connected through all the different people because it's all about yeah. the people yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, it's it's interesting because because we are on Facebook Live, mm-hmm. so we have a question. Oh, <laughs> <see>. <laughs> Look out! And the question <laughs> is: Can each one of y'all explain your perception on what success is? So, what does success look like to you, Corey? Um, success uh, to me is growth. Mm. Um, the more you grow, the more successful you are. Of course, uh, that's how I look at success um, and, and accomplishment, accomplishments, and um, just everything like uh, awards. Uh, just being nominated for award. Uh, mm. If last year you weren't nominated for nothing, and then now you are, that's that's success. I mm-hmm. mean, just it's, to me, it's just growth. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. success mm-hmm. is. The more mm-hmm. you grow, the more successful you are. That's how I look at it. How would you def- How would you define success, Doc? You know, most simply stated for me now, success is being part part of things that are special, mm. right? And contributing to things that are special in some way mm-hmm. uh, to me is a is a pretty succinct definition of success right now it wasn't always like that right you know, your <laughs> definition kind of changes as you get older mm-hmm. to a certain extent but now that to me that's what it is yeah you know um as you said when you're younger you you want to associate success with a lot of material kind of mm-hmm. things right and at this place in my life it's not even about the material mm-hmm. things right success for me is to be happy being who i am helping other people and helping them become happy yeah. with what it is they actually yeah. do, right? And so um, the material stuff, you know, um, as we know, as Dr. Rao would ask the question, what does it take for you to be happy? Mm-hmm. And he says, well, whatever makes you happy, you can also lose it and become unhappy, mm-hmm. right? So happiness is from within, I think success is 
from within, you know, um, because you have to be able to determine based upon your values what's important to you and determine what, what your success could actually yeah. be. And, and that's, that, I think that's a, that's a personal self definition. Yeah. So basically just saying success is anything that make you feel good. Yeah, make that you it feel good. It could happy. be the smallest thing, yep, to the biggest thing. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, we we in this class Terry's talked about a couple of times, you know, we went pretty deep on some things that can get mystical at times, mm-hmm. right? And one of the things that struck me is that no human is capable of acting outside their perceived self interest at right. a given time. And that doesn't mean you can't be altruistic. Doesn't mean you can't do good things. It means mm-hmm. that you you're getting some reward from everything, or you anticipate some reward from everything you do. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's an act of service, whether it's an act of commerce, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think understanding that and realizing that that's okay. That's just part of human condition. Mm-hmm. That helps a lot because mm-hmm. a lot of times it's just about peeling back the junk, right? That's right. And peeling, That's you know, right. That's right. jealousy and, and, and yeah. anger yeah. and frustration yeah. Yeah. and all yeah. that. None of those things really serve us well. It's just because of stories that we're telling us in our head, like you described, yeah. like, why am I being punished <laughs> by this? You know, yeah. but then right. you realize right. after a while that wasn't it at all. There was things happening that you didn't even know <laughs> at the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Good, bad, who knows, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, yeah. We have another question here. Um, and that question is, what's next for the on-time brand? <laughs> um, so like I mentioned before, like uh, we get so many calls from catering. Um, and that's my passion. That's my first um, thing. Um, on the line, we have uh, Expediter. And I, I started off expediting. So expediting is, is somebody that's reading the ticket out, letting you know what's coming in. Walking in, I have a, a shrimp burger, win okra, and stuff like that. So they're letting the cooks know, like, they're the driver. Um, mm-hmm. They're the finisher, too, because you're uh, plating mm-hmm. at the end. So when I, like I, uh, and to piggyback on this, this is my first time ever working in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> this is my restaurant. I never worked in a restaurant before. So this is my first time ever working in a restaurant. So I, I, uh, I started expediting at the beginning because I knew that the plates had to look a certain way. And that's the mm-hmm. only thing that I was thinking of, but it was more stuff to the expediting, calling the tickets out and everything. So me being a caterer, I'm a little slower at doing that because mm-hmm. I want everything to look perfect, but it's hard to make everything look perfect mm-hmm. at a restaurant because mm-hmm. it's just the, the, the pace. So uh, I don't work in that position anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who kicked me out? My wife. Your wife. <laughs> you got fired, right? <laughs> she was like, I take over you. You got to move. Yeah, like, you so messing up the rotation. Yeah. 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 So she don't even let me come up there no more. So, um, but I say this to say that as, uh, we get so many calls about catering. Um, like I said, my, that was my first passion. And it, and it still is my passion. I like making stuff look good, pretty, mm-hmm. um, taste good, and everything all in, all into one. Um, I notice now with um, a lot of catering that's going on now, it's, it's, it's not a lot of passion put into it, mm-hmm. not a lot of love. It's overcharged. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not the right way. Uh, so our next step is um, when we bought – Purchased the real estate. We bought extra lots that was connected to it too. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. we're looking to build a, a catering kitchen on that last lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to start my own catering kitchen. Um, that's that was actually always my passion. My passion was never to open a restaurant, mm-hmm. and the only reason why we opened a restaurant because we was able to buy a restaurant. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't able to buy a restaurant, I, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't open a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I looked at it like okay. It's different from renting and owning. If I ever, God forbid, get in some a, a situation that we need to get out of, like we're able to like let it go, like to, to get us out of the situation to help mm-hmm. my family and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I looked at instead of mm-hmm. like, uh, I'm renting, I can't do anything about mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. that's the main reason why we open mm-hmm. a restaurant. Mm-hmm. So as like I said, that's my main passion is uh, we're, we're actually in our first step of looking at that. Um, um, of trying to get plans together soon to mm-hmm. build that catering kitchen over there, so that, that that catering kitchen helps a lot. Helps a lot of uh, things, and now, now I'm going back to the help part again, and and helping the community. Um, it helps me because we're expanding our brand 
from On Time Catering. So On Time mm-hmm. Restaurant, On Time Catering is totally mm-hmm. two different things. Mm-hmm. Um, it keeps On Time Catering alive. Uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> it helps uh, when people call in about different uh, weddings and stuff like that. They're going to get like oh, they're going to get one hundred percent. Some most of the time, one hundred and ten percent from us from catering. It also helps other entrepreneurs that's in the the food industry. Um, like I mentioned before, I I cooked out our kitchen and stuff like that. And in the midst of that, we had a health department call mm-hmm. on us, and that's mm-hmm. what we like. Yo, I gotta do something different. Mm-hmm. What I, for me to invo- to avoid to try to help some people that's in that situation, it provides kitchen space for them. Mm-hmm. Um, other food trucks that's coming in it provides mm-hmm. kitchen space for them. If I'm able to accommodate that, um, it just helps a lot of different things. We have a lot of bakers that's around that mm-hmm. that that's starting up. A lot of black bakers too, mm-hmm. and they're like mm-hmm. very, very, very mm-hmm. talented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps it, that that can help the situation. Um, so it's not it's not it's me opening it up, but it's actually helping other people too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's our next adventure is, is opening up a catering kitchen. And catering kitchen is just an open kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Looking forward to that. Yeah. That's for the greater good of all, yeah. right? And uh, Doc and I talk about the greater good, right? Someone made a comment on Facebook Live that there's so much to go around for everybody, right? You talked about abundance. It's a mindset, right? But when you look at it, and I ask this question all the time, what have we run out of since we've been on this earth? And the answer has been nothing. Mm -hmm. The universe is full of abundance, Mm -hmm. right? And so with that, we have to be able to get people to understand, right? You giving back helps you, helps you, Mm -hmm. helps your business, helps your family. It helps those coming after you. And so, you know, (laughs) I remember listening to this young guy was talking and he was, he said, I got to go talk to this OG, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, original gangster, mm-hmm. you know, the older term, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm standing there and I'm listening to him. And I look over my left shoulder and I look over my right shoulder. And I said, who he's talking about? He was actually talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I got what he talked about. Because when I was younger, I was going to older guys to ask for advice. <laughs> you know? And so now that I got it, it's like, I'm at the point where now, it's for me to give advice, mm-hmm. move out the way, yep. give advice, and at some point in time, you're going to be in the same role. Yep. Yep. So you're building kind of a pipeline yep. of those people, mm-hmm. those cu- culinary people, the bakers, the chefs, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. You're the example for what that could look like in Wilmington yeah. moving forward. Right, yep, yep. And that's um, <clears throat> that's giving hope. Uh, mm-hmm. I was uh, talking to a, a very 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 wealthy guy one time and he was um explaining to me about the black lives matter signs being moved away and was asking me was it hey you think it's smart for us to purchase some land right now and put a statue there i'm like statue doesn't do anything for us in the black community that's right i said uh and actually i I could tell you the name because it's it's about the story but it's actually the owner of uh live oak i said uh don't get no statue I said, what you already did uh, for the black community was bigger than a statue. You gave a young black kid from the south side of Wilmington a loan, which a, a business loan, not just a loan, but a business loan. Like when once you did that, you gave the black community hope because if they see Corey do it, then I know I could do it too. And yeah. that's the problem I think with us is uh, in the black community is more of hope. We don't have hope. So it's like a monkey see monkey do type thing. So if, if I see him doing it, then I know I could do it. But I, I think mine's like more of a, a good positive hope. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, once he did that, I, I, that that helped out a lot because I have a lot of other people asking me like, how did I do it? And I and I let them know because I mean it's it's room around for everybody. everybody. To eat. That's, <laughs> right. Yeah, everybody. that's right. Everybody. That's right. <laughs> and everybody I think nobody don't understand that, but it mm. is. It is. And I'm telling you this because I'm in that situation. I help other food people. And that's the hardest thing to give, to help people with other food, other chefs and stuff like that. But I help them. Because I know people still going to come to own time, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, yeah and that's, uh, we probably got time for this one last question. <clears throat> we have a question from a viewer. 
about any tips, you know, high level tips of somebody wanting to be a private chef and what would be critical steps for somebody who wanted to be in the food business? Uh, the, the biggest tips, like I just said, uh, like I'm not the person to knock anybody that's doing anything like illegal because I did it. <laughs> like I look at it like you got to start from somewhere. So the the biggest tips is is getting all your credentials and everything lined up. Um, <clears throat> when I was doing stuff out of my house and stuff like that, I felt like a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Making yeah, money, yeah, but you still yeah. got to watch your back type right, thing. Right, right, right. Health um, department. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, the health department was police. <laughs> 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 so I still had to watch my back. And then it, it, it still had people that would call. I, I got somebody uh, that threatened me one time. They was going to call the tax department on me because I wasn't paying taxes on it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You, mm. you can't find that money anyways, but stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's credentials. Um like hats off to my accountant, Tamika Brown. Um, mm -hmm. She helped me and my wife so much, like to the point, like I used to get mad at her. Like she would tell me, you got to do this. You got to do that. I'm like, no, Tamika, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. No, 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 no. And then she's like, just, just trust me. So mm -hmm. by her helping me have everything lined up and stuff like that and all my, everything in order, it, it helped us. She's helping our, our growth. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that. So uh, just having your everything lined up, all your credentials, everything you need to make that happen, mm -hmm. and then you ain't have to, you don't have to worry about anything. Like you don't have to worry about nobody like doing anything to you or anything like that because mm -hmm. all your stuff is lined up in order and everything is taken care of. Just mm -hmm. doing it the right way. Yeah, a lot of people like to cut corners, doing it the wrong way, this quick dollar type thing. Um, if you have a pat, if you if you have a passion, a quick dollar is. If you have a passion, you're trying to make a quick dollar off your passion, that's not a passion. That's right. Because mm -hmm. it's not going to last long. You want your passion to last long. That's right. So mm -hmm. I never I never look at the quick dollar. Never look at the quick dollar. I turn a dollar down fast, and I turn plenty of I'm them sure, down. Yeah. If I can't do it, I can't do it. I apologize. But I probably know somebody else that could do it. But that's, right. that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing is, is keeping everything in line, all your credentials, all the everything right, certificates, everything. Yeah, so I hear no shortcuts, right? right. No, no, no shortcuts. No shortcuts. Right. <laughs> It'll get you and, in trouble. And, and be right. legit, you that's know, right. like that's, that's right. and that's and right. your story just, I mean, echoes that so strongly, right? Yeah. It is a story of, of really of apprenticeship to mastery, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And now the part of that mastery is the sharing part, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. with others and helping. Well, I think sadly we're at the end of the yeah. hour. This has been yeah. a fantastic show we want to thank our our listeners and viewers for joining us here at unlikely intersections we want to thank Corey scott mm -hmm. for joining us and you know you'll be able to find this show uh, obviously at our website unlikelyintersection.com you can find it here on facebook at unlikely intersections you can find it on youtube unlikely intersections we're hopeful that Corey's going to share it oh, from yeah. on time because yep. I know that yep. thing yep. is hot. We'll put it on. Uh, you there. know, you can find me personally uh, at docphilipbrown.com or docphilipbrown on uh, LinkedIn. Terry, where can we you find can you? You can find me on LinkedIn, Terry Jackson, PhD. You can find me on Facebook as well. Uh, thank you for the questions. Thank you for paying attention to the important conversation mm -hmm. that we've had here today. You get to see what hope really looks like. Oh. And then, Corey, where can we find you as if all these people don't already know? <laughs> don't go to Corey Scott on Facebook. <laughs> Please go to Own Time Restaurant on mm. Facebook, Instagram, and we just got TikTok. T-H-Y-M-E. Like the herb. <laughs> we'll see you at the next intersection.